What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and today we're going to be talking about improving your offline racing. We're going to be talking about some settings and various other tips and tricks, a lot of things that they don't tell you. This isn't going to be a driving video or anything like that, we're just going to be looking at the menus and voiceover and all that sort of thing, so if you don't like these types of videos, feel free to navigate away at this point. However, we're going to be talking about R-Factor 2 specifically, although with that said, all of these things will also apply to R-Factor 1. Uh, base titles such as R-Factor 1, GTR 2, GT Legends, Stock Car Extreme, Super League Formula, on and on and on and on and on. As well as many of these things will also apply to other titles not based on the same engine or uh, same technology, I guess. Uh, a lot of these things are just kind of basic AI things and how AI itself works. So let us begin. Rule number one of racing with AI is AI does not actually stand for artificial intelligence. What it really means is actual idiots, because that is what these guys are, and that is what adding them to your race adds. An actual idiot. Okay? They're pre-programmed to follow, you know, certain racing lines, certain certain passing lines, certain defending lines. Uh, they hit the gas here, they hit the brakes here, they turn in here, they go about yay, speed through the corner, they hit the gas there, blah, 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 on and on and on, and they're robots, and that's what they do. And they do it pretty well when they're in their element, because that's not necessarily that difficult. However, where it falls apart is when they kind of get next to one another, when they're forced outside of their ideal comfort zone, and they have to kind of figure out, well, as I like to call it, what is the meaning of life for them, you know? You'll often see, for example, in races, the AI is just basically stuck together, but there's, you know, half a track that's totally not being used, and you can just blast around like 30 cars in one go. That's what's going on there. They just don't see that track is there, and they don't know how to actually utilize it. So one of the easiest ways to combat that is actually very simple. Turn down the number of drivers in your race. Okay? When you add more drivers to your race, more AI to your race, that means that there's going to be more cars being driven the exact same fashion, fighting for the exact same racing line, <laughs> and it's going to push them out of their element, and it's just not going to be pretty. You'd be surprised how much better of a quality of race you can actually get by turning down the number of drivers to something more reasonable to what you're actually going to be racing, versus just going ahead and saying, hey, Bigger grid, bigger fun. Yeah, let's just max this out because I can run 103 drivers in R Factor 2. I'm going to do that every single race. As you can imagine, 103 cars being driven in the exact same fashion is going to be pretty miserable because they're all going to be fighting over that one preset racing line trying to filter down and get on with the race. You know, as I as I always call it in my videos, contemplating the meaning of life phase of the race <laughs> where they just don't quite get it. Like, seriously, that is the easiest way, and chances are you really don't need as many AI as you think you do, providing you have them set up to the proper strength, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Moving on. Rule number two is AI is incredibly track dependent. Simple as that. A lot of the tracks that come as official content for whatever game you're talking about will have pretty good quality AI as generally... Uh, the developers actually take their time to make it proper and give it a good experience. Whereas a lot of the third-party mod tracks that are out there, especially the lower quality ones, typically that's when you'll see a lot of issues. Generally, if you stick with official content or content from reputable mod teams, you won't have too much of an issue. But just be aware that sometimes there's not much you can do at all with your settings or uh, anything like that short of actually going in there and fixing it yourself, which is beyond what we'll talk about in this video. Next up is the fact that you should always run a qualifying session. Always. This is hugely important. You must run qualifying sessions. Drill it into the back of your brain. Qualify if you want to race offline. You will thank me later. Basically, as it does in any other form of racing, puts the fast guys at the front, puts the slow guys at the back, and because the AI struggles to race nearly as efficiently or effectively as a human does, you know, have the ability to knife through a field like a hot knife through butter, you want to make sure your fast guys are where the fast guys should be and the slow guys are where the slow guys should be because you don't want the fast guys buried behind all the slow guys trying to figure out how to get through the field effectively. Okay, besides that, there are also three different ways to end a session of qualifying because 
for example, as I have it set up here currently, you probably don't want to wait 44 minutes for the end of the session and you just like to move on, ignoring the lap counts here. But uh, clicking the finish session button will just end the session right now and move on to the race in this case. Uh, which means that as the grid is set here currently in our standings, that is the way we will line up for the race. If we click Next Session, this will quickly simulate the session very roughly inefficiently and give you some weird results. I would not necessarily suggest clicking the Next Session button to end your session. Now do note in R Factor 1 and its derivative titles, sometimes that can actually be the best way to go about that, so go ahead and test that out for yourselves. Now going back here, there is also one other way, and it's the more effective way to finish out a qualifying session quickly when you just don't quite feel like it, and that is activate time acceleration. Here in R Factor 2, it's Control X. Uh, check your key bindings in whatever other game you are playing. Uh, GTR2, for example, has a big old red time acceleration button. It's generally advisable to use time acceleration uh, rather than using one of the other approaches because you'll get more accurate times, which means that they'll be lined up more accurately in the first place, which gives better results in the end. So now that our session is done, we can click the Finish Session or Next Session button and move on. Yay! And then moving on to the AI settings. A lot of you guys are probably expecting this to be the first thing that I talked about and be the entirety of the video. However, in my opinion, it's actually the least important thing you can do to affect the quality of your offline racing experience. And it's also all very straightforward and simple and easy to understand. Without taking the steps prior, however, you're going to be chasing your tail like a dog because you're fixing one problem by introducing another problem and it's just a vicious cycle. For example, one of the things I frequently see, you know, on other people's races, my own races as well, is running too short of a qualifying session, running too many drivers, you know, things like that, which bunches up the field and when they're bunched up they're going to be driving really slow because they're a bunch of, well, actual idiots out there. So what happens is we pass a billion cars in like the first five laps and then you know after that phase the AI is doing their thing and going like crazy and they're queued up behind us and like we have a train of 30 cars behind you because well they're faster than you but they're just not quite smart enough to actually be able to pass efficiently and get the job done. And that's generated because of not running a qualifying session, running with too many cars out there on track. And to fix that, we've gone ahead and cranked up the strength setting because that makes them faster. But what that's ended up doing is made them faster at the start of the race, yes. However, it's introduced the problem in the mid-portion of the race of making the AI incredibly fast. So we've compensated for one problem that should have been solved in the first place. You have to get there before you can start changing these settings. It's all a bunch of building blocks. But as for what these settings do, it's actually very straightforward. Your AI strength controls the difficulty, how fast they go. Now it's important to know, at least to have a basic understanding, that the AI actually drives a different car from you. They drive on a different set of physics to enable better CPU performance as well as better uh, performance from their driving, giving them a simpler model to handle, which makes it easier for them and things like that. So it's good to know that when you do turn it up, you're giving them more grip, and this is basically telling them to have a whole bunch of advantages that you, the player, won't get, so their car will drive differently. For example, at 120% difficulty, you'll often see them rocket down the straights faster than what you possibly could be doing even in the same car, and you'll often left wondering, how'd that happen? I came out of the corner better than that guy, and yet he's still rocketing away in the distance. That's why. Uh, and again, you're going to tweak this setting to figure out what works best for you. I can't suggest you any particular settings. I generally run in the 103 to 107 percent range. But again, that's just a suggestion. And that again will also change on a per track basis. AI aggression controls how aggressive they are, how willing they are to block, how willing they are to pass, how willing they are to go kamikaze and chuck one up the inside, things like that. When you set them to 100, you're racing a bunch of Takuma Satos. When you turn it down to zero, you're racing a bunch of very passive guys out for a Sunday drive. Now, my general rule of thumb, or at least where I like to start my settings at, 
is for open wheel cars somewhere between 30 and 40 percent for GT cars and other tin tops generally somewhere between 50 and 60 percent will work if you are running on ovals you will want to turn that up like mad to enable them to pass more efficiently to make them less hesitant just worth noting and as you are racing a faster car you will probably want to decrease the aggression as you're running a fast or slower car excuse me you're going to want to increase the aggression a little bit has a big effect here in this setting but again you're going to want to play with that those two settings on an individual basis as well as a per track basis then there is also this AI limiter that is a new feature into the R Factor 2 menus. It was previously available uh, through Notepad and one of the configuration files outside of the game itself. And it's also available in R Factor 1 and derivative titles in Notepad as well that you have to change outside of the game. Basically, it's controlling the level of variance between the AI drivers. When you have it set to 0%, which is what I personally choose to run in most scenarios, you're not putting a limiter on them you're getting you know basically the full range of values that that particular driver is capable of so you're making the fast guys you're really fast guys you're making the slow guys the really slow guys but when you turn it up you put a cap on how much differential there can be essentially so the slower guys are going to be much closer to the fast guys you're making the field more tightly packed and again, you're going to want to figure out what setting works best for you. Uh, personally, again, I choose to leave them at zero because it does give them more room to breathe, which makes for a better experience in my opinion. However, again, you may like it turned all the way up depending on what type of car you're running. And again, with oval racing, you'll probably want to turn that up as well just to keep the field more tightly packed and more oval-like. So, there you go. Run qualifying sessions, don't run too many cars, be mindful of how many cars you should be running for that type of car in the first place, and you'll probably have a better offline racing experience with R-Factor 2, R-Factor 1, and various other titles. So hopefully this has improved the quality of your offline racing, but uh, yeah, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed. All right, bye.